She told the deputies that her 23 year old son has a quote unquote 10 year old's mindset. He was never a guy to act crazy, very humble young man at Auburn and for him to do the stuff he was doing after only being in the NFL for two years, it didn't make sense to me. If you go to his Instagram, and I mean this in the most respectful way possible, you can tell something's not right with him. Something's not right in his head. Many, many, many years ago, there was a running back who was absolutely dominating the college football level, and maybe even saying he was dominating it might be an understatement. Why do I say that? Well, it has a little something to do with he rushed for over 1,800 yards and had 23 touchdowns in one season. To put that into perspective, most college running backs don't even get those type of numbers in three or four years, and he did it in one year. Pretty dang good if you gotta ask me. He was coming off of back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons and also was named as a Heisman finalist. Not only his football career, but his life in general, it was at an all-time high. He was one of the most famous running backs in the SEC. He was getting thousands, and I mean thousands of likes on every single Instagram post, and to go on top of that, he was so good, he figured he'd skip his senior season and go straight to the NFL. Things were looking really good for the this young man. It was almost a done deal and it seemed certain that he was going to maintain generational wealth and never have to worry about money ever again. And even in his first year when he got to the NFL, things were going great for him. He was named to the all-rookie team. But unfortunately, things took a drastic and a very unexpected turn for the worse. Out of nowhere, he started getting in a ton of legal trouble, which was weird because this guy never got in trouble. He was known as an extremely humble young man that just loved to play football. And to go on top of that, he was having weird outbursts towards his family. It was almost like with a snap of a finger, he turned into a completely different person. If you don't want to take my word for it, that's cool, but even his mom stated that her 23-year-old son has a quote-unquote 10-year-old's mindset. Why did she say that? Because out of nowhere, he just went crazy. It even got so bad that he just quit showing up to football practice. He just quit showing up. They tried calling him, they tried texting him, and he wouldn't respond. There's only two words to describe the situation. Weird and very, and I mean very bizarre. And what's maybe even stranger about all of this, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that I've never seen anybody talk about it. Luckily enough for you, I've been doing research and gathering a ton of facts and information on this subject for the past couple of months. I'll leave you with this. You might want to strap in for this one and wait until the end of this video because when I show you some of the stuff he's posted on his Instagram, I don't think you're going to believe it. It's not only shocking, but when I was looking at it, it highly concerned me. Something's not right here, and a lot of people have many questions about this that have been unanswered even till this day. But however, in today's video, we're going to get to the bottom of this one question. What really happened to Trey Mason? Oh man, oh man, y'all are going to be in for a treat with this one. And I really think a lot of people are going to enjoy this video because many of you, like myself, you're going to have an immediate flashback when you hear this guy's name. I remember when I was growing up watching Trey Mason just completely take over and run over everybody in that last year when he was at Auburn. And you can make a legit argument and say he's the main reason Auburn got very close to winning a national championship against Florida State. That's an entirely different conversation for a different day, but looking where this guy's at now, it is extremely sad to say the least. Before we get into it real quick, I do want to say two things. Number one, if there's any recommendations on stories or players you want to see a video or topic about, let me know in the comment section. If a comment gets a lot of likes, more than likely, we'll do it. And number two, if you're new to the channel or simply you've been watching and you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and joining our amazing college football community. We would love to have you here, and may I remind you, it is 100% free to subscribe and it doesn't hurt you a single bit. I think a lot of you are just like me. You're always watching certain channels and you just forget to subscribe. It helps us out tremendously. I'm going to leave it at that. Now, to get into Mr. Trey Mason's story, we got to throw it all the way back to where things started. In high school, Trey Mason was already on track to be a really solid football player. In his senior year, he had 1,643 rushing yards with 24 touchdowns. Not too shabby. He was a four-star recruit who pretty much had offers from every single college in the country, but ultimately, he decided to go to Auburn. Not too many people was hyping this up at the time. It just seemed like another four-star running back, but little did everybody out there know this guy was going to be arguably one of the best running backs to ever play in the SEC. In 2011, his true freshman season didn't play that much. He was a backup, but he did have 28 attempts for 161 yards, averaging 5.8 yards a carry. There's nothing really to talk about for that 2011 season. He didn't play. Fast forward in time into 2012, this is where he really started to pick up the pace, and he already surpassed 1,000 yards. To be exact, he had 171 carries for 1,002 yards, barely eclipsed that 1K mark, and averaged 5.9 yards a carry with 8 touchdowns. He was really good in 2012, but he wasn't quite yet on that special category. That was up until 2013, the following season. This is where Trey Mason had a whopping 317 carries, that's a lot, 
for 1,816 yards, averaging 5.7 yards a carry and 23 touchdowns. As you can see right here, he's a very consistent back. Every single year, he averaged right at 5.8 yards a carry. It just so happened that in 2013, Trey Mason, he was carrying the ball like 30 times a game. He was the definition of a workhorse. And at the same time, this is when Auburn had Gus Malzahn and he had the mentality of, hey, if you're not going to stop the run game, we're just going to run it every single play. And a lot of times they did that. In the 2013 SEC Championship game against Missouri, he had 46. Let me repeat that number for you guys. 46 carries for 304 yards. 46 carries? Sheesh, man. I don't know if we'll ever see that record being broken considering now college football, it's pass-oriented. I don't know. Maybe I'm over-exaggerating it, but 46 carries, looking back on it, that was insane. Because when I think of one of the biggest workhorses at the college football level, I immediately think of Derrick Henry for Alabama. But even Derrick Henry didn't have 46 carries in one single game. And even in the BCS championship game in which Auburn did lose to Florida State, he had 34 carries carries for 195 yards. You want to talk about ending your career with a bang, that's the definition of it. His last two games, he had 304 yards rushing and 195 yards rushing. It doesn't get too much better than that. He was at the pinnacle of his career and he knew it. He knew there was no way he was going to improve his draft stock anymore, so he decided to forego his senior season of eligibility and enter the NFL draft. And in the 2014 NFL Draft, he was selected in the third round with the 75th overall pick by the St. Louis Rams. Today, we know him as the Los Angeles Rams, but back then, it was still St. Louis. And to be a rookie in 2014, he had a killer of a season. He had 179 carries for 765 yards, which came to a total of 4.3 yards a carry and four touchdowns. I know, only averaging 4.3 yards a carry and four touchdowns, it doesn't wow you, but he really had a good year. He did also have 148 receiving yards, which is worth mentioning. Although he didn't rush for something like 1,400 or 1,500 yards, these numbers were still good enough to earn him a spot on the PFWA All-Rookie Team. But in 2015, his production dropped mightily, and the main reason, and probably the only reason for that, is because the St. Louis Rams they decided to draft Todd Gurley in the first round. So with Todd Gurley being the new premier back, Trey Mason, he was pretty much sitting on the bench. In that 2015 season, he played in 13 games, but he only had 75 carries for 207 yards, averaging a miserable 2.8 yards a carry. Yeah, it was a bad season, and I think we can leave it at that. The numbers speak for themselves. And another key thing to mention is, on those 75 carries, he had three fumbles. So yes, he didn't play a lot, but when he did get some playing time, he wasn't productive at all. And I hate to say this, I really do, because I like Trey Mason as a person, but he was a liability on the field. You couldn't have him out there. He averaged under three yards a carry, and every 25 carries, he had a fumble. And maybe that's what caused what we're about to get into, because after that 2015 season, Trey Mason basically disappeared. And no, I'm not kidding. The head coaches and assistants couldn't even get in contact with him. Take a listen to this. In a four-month span, Trey Mason had five incidents with the police. I'm going to repeat that again. In a four-month span, he had five incidents with the police. Not a good look. It was then stated by the head coach, Jeff Fisher, that Trey Mason has quote-unquote decided to not communicate with the team. And that's what led Jeff Fisher to say quote-unquote, we have to prepare ourselves that Trey's not going to be here. Very weird though, right? Because this is a kid who had no problems at Auburn whatsoever, and now he's gotten involved with the police five times in four months, and he's not showing up to practice or even communicating. It's one thing not to show up to practice. Okay, maybe you got some personal stuff going on, but it's a nerd thing not to be answering calls and tech messages and giving the coaching staff reasons as to why you're not showing up. It wasn't a good look, and what we're about to get into next, just brace yourself, so I'm going to leave you with that. While all this was going on, there was questions from everybody, because at this point in time, Trey Mason was still a valuable running back. He was the second string running back in the NFL. Nobody could find this guy, and nobody could come into contact with him, so his mom, Miss Tina Mason, here's what she told the police. She told the deputies that her 23-year-old son has a quote-unquote 10 year old's mindset the reason for that is resulting from head injuries sustained during his football career you want to know why she said that because check this out dashboard camera footage from july 27 2016 by the way showed mason fleeing deputies on atv at speeds that reached 80 miles per hour the chase ended when mason fled into his mother's house he refused to come out though he was sighted and his atv was towed his mother followed up by saying this trey
Ray is not himself at all. He's not making good decisions. And this is when a police officer or deputy, whatever you want to call it, told Miss Tina Mason that her son should be playing football and she disagreed. She stated, quote unquote, no, actually, he shouldn't. There's CTE in this head injury thing. You can say he should be playing football, but this is not what it is. Four days before all this, the ATV incident, Trey Mason had been admitted to the hospital for evaluation after his mother called authorities to report Mason had been acting erratically. She said her son wasn't the same after the 2015 season. Quote unquote again, clearly, we could see the change. Like, completely. And this right here was the most concerning thing his mom ever said. As much as he's accomplished, as hard as he's worked, as much as he built his character in record-breaking time, it's going downhill because of what's going on. He doesn't even know. He's not conscious enough. It's sad there's not another way to say it, and on July 30th, since Trey Mason wasn't communicating with the team or showing up, the Rams placed him on the reserve slash did not report list. And on March 10th in 2017, Mason was released by the Rams, and that's all there was to it. It was stated that Trey Mason still was working out in the season he was gonna try to come back to the NFL whenever he was ready or got another opportunity. Here's the thing though, I don't think a lot of people understand this, like Eminem said in that one song, sometimes every opportunity you get you don't get it more than once. It can be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. What did Eminem say in that song? Oh yeah, he said, you only got one shot. Don't miss your chance to blow. Well, that's how it was for Trey Mason. Yes, he was working for his comeback, but here's the thing. Nobody offered him another job. Why didn't nobody want to give him another job? Oh, well, maybe it had something to do with he didn't show up for his other job and he had all these incidents and investigations going on with the police. Yes, he was a great football player. Nobody's denying that, but your best ability, say with me now, is availability. You can be the greatest employee in the world, but if you show up three out of five days a week, you're getting fired. But whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Let's go back to this, and I think this is a very serious matter. Remember, his mom said no. There's something wrong. He has the mindset of a 10 year old. He has CTE. Sometimes I would brush stuff like that off the side. I'm like, oh, she's over exaggerating, but I believed her. The reason I believed her is because Trey Mason has always had a level head on his shoulders. He was never a guy to act crazy, very humble young man at Auburn. And for him to do the stuff he was doing after only being in the NFL for two years, it didn't make sense to me. So I did some digging and research and yeah, check this out. If you go to his Instagram, and I mean this in the most respectful way possible, you can tell something's not right with him. Something's not right in his head. And what I mean by that is, and I'm gonna show you some examples, he's posting Instagram pictures like it's 2012 or 2013, like he's still a guy in high school. For example, here he posted this with no context whatsoever, a picture of a $100 bill, and the caption says, Benjamin Franklin. And also another random one right here, it's just a picture of a PlayStation controller coffee mug. Another odd one, it's some quote where he says in the caption, say no to drugs. We got back to back pictures right here where one says, I just wanna say money been buying my happiness, so y'all definitely lied. Why did I share that one with y'all? Because right after it, he posted his cash app and said, send me some money. And in the comments, somebody said, dang G, it's like that nowadays. And he said, how are y'all gonna like the post and not send me something? Boy, I tell y'all, y'all ain't real. I'm gonna say this before we continue to get a move on. I think the down baddest of down bad of down bad of down baddest of down bad you can ever be in this life is posting your cash app on any social media platform. I don't care. As a man, if you post your cash app on any social media platform, I don't care. You have no integrity. I don't care. I don't care a single bit. There's no way as a man myself, I would ever post my cash app on Instagram and ask people to send me money. Why is that? Because even if I needed the money, I'm not letting people out here know I'm broke. That's how I am, but also too, I don't like hand downs. I wanna get it myself. But continuing to go along here, here's another random picture with no caption. You see what I'm saying? This is a picture that we would have posted back in 2011 or 2012, not 2022. Another example, he's posting memes in 2022 back from 2010. Most recently in 2023, a random picture where he said, after the sauna, and then another one, in the car. I don't know how to explain this anymore. When his mom said, quote unquote, he has the mindset of a 10 year old, she wasn't lying. These were the same pictures as a 10 year old myself I was posting on Instagram. What grown man in 2023 is posting a selfie where he says, in the car? And oh yeah, by the way, speaking of cars, if you go on his Instagram, I'm not showing you all the pictures, just some of them here and there. He is obsessed with his car. He has a Dodge Charger, he loves it, and that's cool for him, it's one of his hobbies. But it seems like if you go to his Instagram, you'll see what I'm talking about, that is the only thing he cares about whatsoever, his car. And originally, when I started doing my research for this video, he did not have this in his bio, but he has changed it. He has put casino in his bio, and also, <laughs> check this out, 
professional sports better. Oh, brother, I'm going to be honest. That about did it for me where I was like, yep, there's something wrong. And the worst part about this is he's not trying to be funny or mean it unironically. He's being dead serious because I scrolled all the way through for the past year or two and on his Instagram, he's talking about how he sports bets all the time. I mean, I've seen former NFL and NBA players go bankrupt, but I've never, and I mean never, ever, ever, ever seen a former NFL player post his cash app on his Instagram asking for money. And make no mistakes about it, this guy was a flat out star at the college football level. To Trey Mason, I'm wishing the best of luck I really am, but I'm going to end the video off with this. Growing up, I didn't necessarily believe in CTE too much because I didn't know a lot about it. But after seeing what happened with Antonio Brown and Trey Mason, if you don't believe in CTE, I, I don't know another way to convince you. The only two examples you need for proof is Antonio Brown and this one right here. How else do you explain these guys' behaviors? They're very similar. And this also goes to show you as fast as you rise to the top in this life, you can fall even faster. I'm very curious. Let me know your thoughts down below, but uh, roll with me.